It's good to uh, be here again with Noel Masonry and uh, Matt Janke uh, recording this. Uh, we're doing the Sunday School lesson for this coming Sunday, April the 26th, and the title of the lesson today is Saved. And it's, uh, of course, the book of Romans is so rich, but this is uh, dealing with a passage out of Romans 10, 5 through 15. Uh, salvation has always been granted uh, through faith, and that's the way God uh, intended for it to be from the beginning, and that's the way certainly that it is today. I just want to say a few words, and then Noel is going to go back and do a little bit of background through chapter 9 uh, leading up to verse 5 in chapter uh, 10. But people have been uh, all doing all kinds of things since the beginning of time to try to be right with God. There were those that uh, in some cultures that uh, gave sacrifices. If you've been watching TV much, you see this guy uh, standing out a, a over a volcano and these two men are talking and they're trying to get water and make it rain so they're sacrificing people uh, to the gods if you will uh, to try to get water but they've sacrifices offered uh, to many uh, different gods throughout the eons of time and other people have uh, uh, bathed in sacred rivers and and uh, went to certain mountains we have those go to uh, Mecca as far as the city uh, but we have those who go to certain mountains uh, and and worship uh, trying to be uh, closer to God by doing that and others uh, uh, have statues that they bow down to and they burn incense and and those kinds of things so people have always been trying to do something to be right with God but God through Jesus Christ and his incarnation his life death and resurrection has made the way for us to to have eternal salvation uh, the ultimate way the only way according to the Word of God Amen. and so uh, Noel if you will if you'll go back and uh, do just a little bit of uh, uh, chapter 9 and then okay. we'll move into chapter uh, okay. 10. Well chapter 9 starts with Paul saying that he is very uh, grieved in his heart. He has great sorrow for Israel because Israel had tried to receive righteousness from God through the law, through their works and they have they have missed the boat, you know. Um, Israel had all the advantages. Um, God has gifted Israel as a chosen people, a chosen nation. Israel was adopted by God. Israel had God's glory revealed to them. Uh, Israel was given the covenants, the laws. They also had the privilege of worshiping God in the temple and seeing the Shekinah glory of God. They had the messianic promises and they had a godly ancestry. And they are the people from whom, from which Christ came. So Israel had a lot, um, a lot to be proud of, but they were too proud. They were very self-righteous. And chapter 9 talks about Israel's rejection, and then it talks about the Gentiles' reception, I guess you can say. Um, Israel talks, I mean, chapter 9 talks about the sovereignty of God and Israel's rejection of God's righteous law. Um, I guess if you want to, you know, make a a conclusion of what chapter 9 talks about is that through faith the Gentiles have found righteousness without even seeking it that's verse 930 and through the law Israel has not found righteousness even though they were seeking it so in chapter 10 it starts out you know um, Paul says, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. Paul had a burden for his people. And he says, I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. I think that's the way it is nowadays in a lot of denominations, a lot of religions around the world. People have a zeal for God but not according to knowledge. I've heard people say, or cliche saying, that uh, some people are so uh, uh, heavenly minded, they're no earthly good. Yeah. (laughs) Because they have a zeal for God, but it's not based on the truth of God and the word of God. It's, uh, in many cases, it's an emotional type experience. That's right. 
you know, and, and um, how do you explain Israel's rejection of Christ, of, of receiving God's righteousness through Christ? Well, I think the first thing is that Israel did not feel a need for salvation. They had everything God given them, and, and they felt um, that since they were God's chosen people and they had the law, and they were trying to be righteous by the works of the law, that they didn't need salvation. Um, Paul came to the truth of salvation through Christ on a Damascus road. Yeah. But, but many of the, uh, but the Jews didn't have a, a, a need for salvation because they thought they were good enough. Mm -hmm. they, were, they were being, um, uh, I don't know, they were, uh, their traditions and, and, and their laws that they try to follow made them righteous with God, acceptable yeah. to God. They, they took the Ten Commandments and made 600 and I think 33 laws out of the Ten Commandments. And, and just for an example of how they wanted to adhere to the law, there was a law that you could not on the Sabbath, you could not uh, travel but so far. So they made another law that if you sat down and ate out of your, your pouch or something, then you, that was your abode, that was your home, you know, because the law said yeah. you couldn't travel so far from home. So then they could travel another distance and they'd sit down and eat. So that, that's just, it's just a snowballed effect. Uh, but that's what yeah. they did, some 633 laws out of the Ten Commandments, trying yeah. to be righteous with God through keeping the law. And they, and they thought that their traditions and their rituals uh, was equal to, to, I guess, to faith in, 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 in sure. Christ. Right. They thought they didn't have to have faith because they had everything else. Yeah. You know? Well, um, go ahead. Well, I was going to say that uh, one thing Paul does in chapters 9 through 11, uh, he, he quotes uh, one-third of chapters 9 through 11 or quotes out of the Old Testament. So Paul... Uh, and, and it's true, of course, but Paul knew the gospel of Jesus Christ and the Old Testament were so closely linked. I want to read one thing that I wrote down. Uh, it says, here Paul reconciled, talking about chapters 9 through 11, here Paul reconciled the role of Israel as a chosen people who, for the most part, rejected the gospel preached by Paul and the status of Gentile believers who came to God through faith in Jesus Jesus' completed work on the cross. So Paul, and we're fixing to get into it, of course, with, cha with chapter 10, verses 5 through 15, but Paul really hammers home here the fact that, you know, the New Testament is a completion of the Old Testament, that, that the Old Testament is just as worthy of the Word of God, I mean, it is the Word of God, as the New Testament. Uh, and we as Christians today, we need to look at both of them as the complete Word of God that God has has. Uh, uh, ordained that we ought to have in print today that we can study and read and, and know and learn his his ways. Yeah. Uh, but Amen. Paul really uh, quoted a lot out of uh, the Old Testament uh, in chapter 10 here that we're about to get into. Yeah, from the book of Deuteronomy. Right, and Leviticus and uh, yeah. others. You know, and um, a lot of people today, I believe, think that their good works and their religious deeds will save them. Yeah. When actually, if they are trusting in those things, right, it will keep them from being saved. Yeah, um, because Romans chapter three verse twenty says, "Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight." So the first thing I think Israel, the reason for their the, the problem they had was that they didn't have a, a a need; they didn't feel a need for salvation. The second thing is that they misunderstood their own law. Everything in the Jewish religion pointed to the coming Messiah. Right. And their law told them that they were sinners in need of a savior. But they worshiped their law and rejected their savior. Right. 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 Yeah. Uh, it, it's just amazing that, that uh, you know, God chose Israel to promote and, and uh, 
the gospel, the good news that was coming, even in the Old Testament, through the prophets that were spoken about Jesus, Isaiah 53. God chose Israel to be the, the ones on the cutting edge out there promoting the good news about who was to come, Jesus Christ, and they internalized it. Yeah. And I think that's what a lot of people do today. They think, well, we're the only ones that's going to be in heaven, you know. Yeah. And uh, that's just not biblical at all. Uh, it's Jew, Gentile. It's whoever believes, trusts, and, and uh, obeys uh, Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Yeah. You know, Israel was ignorant of God's righteousness, not because they had never been told about God's righteousness, but because they refused to learn uh, their, their ignorance stemmed from a willful, stubborn resistance to the truth. Yeah. And they would not submit to God. They were proud of their own self-righteousness and would not admit their need for a Savior. Yeah. Um, and they mis like I said you know, earlier, they misunderstood their own law. Mm -hmm. um, they thought that their, by worshiping their law, by, by obeying the law, that they would be acceptable to God. John says that, I mean, Ephesians says that we are only acceptable to God in the beloved. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so. Well, let me go ahead, if you don't mind, and, and start here in verse 5 of chapter 10, uh, because this is, this is uh, uh, getting into the lesson today. And again, the title of the lesson is Saved. Uh, and, and I'm going to read the first... Uh, I guess these first five, six, and seven uh, verses. Uh, but it, it leads off here with Moses describes in this way the righteousness that is by the law. The man who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that is by faith says, Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is, uh, to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the deep, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, it is in your mouth and in your heart, that is, the word of faith we are proclaiming. So in these verses 5 through, through 8 here, Paul just starts out and, and says that, you know, looking back to Moses, again, Old Testament, uh, he says, Moses did describe in these ways the righteousness that is by the law. Uh, I wrote this down. Uh, what he's doing here is he's contrasting the righteousness that is by the law to the righteousness which is by faith. And, and uh, he goes back, and this comes out of Leviticus, the 18th chapter. And if you go back and read that chapter, uh, Paul uh, or God is telling Israel how they should live. And most of it has to do with... with uh, uh, reframing from the flesh, uh, sexual, uh, if you read the chapter, the whole thing has to do with, with, with sexual encounters, if you will. Right. And, and uh, he's saying here that, uh, Israel, you're not to behave like the Egyptians from whom you just left, nor like the Canaanites whose land I'm about to uh, give you. So uh, the Egyptians, of course, uh, did not know God. And the Canaanites certainly didn't know God. And so he's telling them, okay, you can't be like those you came from, and you certainly can't be like those you're fixing to go and, and live in, in the land because I'm going to give you this land uh, yeah. of milk and honey. So uh, he does a great job here of saying, you know, when you compare these things, the man who does these things will live by them, talking about those by the law. But the righteousness that is uh, by faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven. Uh, you want to expound on those about descending yeah. into heaven and then... Uh, yeah. Okay, but I'd like to say some, one thing about verse 4. Mm -hmm. It says, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness right. um, to everyone who believes. They were trying to strive for righteousness by obedience to the law but really if they put their faith in christ in christ jesus he doesn't have to strive for righteousness anymore right um but you know through the law because the the law is written on our hearts right and in our minds <clears throat> and and i think the jews were very uh upset with the idea that gentiles can become righteous just like the Jews can become righteous. Mm -hmm. And they thought the Gentiles were a bunch of pagan dogs 
and they prayed every day that they were thankful that they were they not weren't like they them. were not them right like them and um so so they couldn't accept the idea that gentiles could be made righteous through faith right so then it says in verse five um but moses for moses writes about the righteousness which is of the law okay Mm -hmm. The man who does those things shall live by them. Mm -hmm. If you decide to live by the law, then you will be judged by the law. And the thing is, none of us can keep the, and none to of the us, letter of the law. That's right. You have to live a perfect life. Mm -hmm. And even James says in 2.10, um, he says, For whoever shall keep the whole law and yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of all. Yeah, in Evangelism Explosion, they have a, an illustration that sin is what separates us from God. And they use the analogy of making an omelet, you know, and you put seven eggs in it. But if there's one rotten egg, it'll mess up the whole omelet. So certainly you wouldn't put it in there. Well, one sin, just one sin. And think about how many times we sin. But one sin will keep you out of heaven yeah. if you're going by the law. I tell guys at the jail, I say, look, how many... How many chains, how many lengths of a chain will have to break if you hang hanging on the chain off a cliff? You don't need one, one That's length. That's it. One, one length, length to, break and you're gone. You, and you're gone. <laughs> you know, and, um, but they decided that the, the Jews thought that they can receive righteousness by the law. But now, verse 6 says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down from above, or who will descend into the abyss or from you know, the deep, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. You know, um, what he's saying, Paul is saying, he's establishing the, assess the accessibility of the message of God's righteousness. Mm -hmm. You don't have to. Paul teaches that Jesus Christ in the flesh, God in the flesh, came down from heaven to show us the righteousness of God. You don't have to search the heavens or descend into the deep right. to find God's righteousness. We, 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 uh, we call that the incarnation. That's right. That uh, Jesus Christ uh, came in the form of a, of a baby, of course, in the form of a man and lived that righteous life. Yeah. And, and he did the completed work of Christ. With the incarnation and the resurrection, he completed the work through right. Calvary's cross that that's God right. had sent him to do. That's right. and, and, uh, and, and that's just what he's saying. We don't have to look to the sky for God to come back, for Jesus to come back. He's already been here. God sent him. And we don't have to look in the grave or go down in the deep, look in the grave because he's risen from the grave. He's as accessible as your mouth. He, that's he, it. He's right here. Your heart and your mouth. That's right. We, we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> yeah. And he says that um, verse 8, God's righteousness is as close, like we just said, mm -hmm. as one's mouth and, and heart. Um, now, he said, but, but what do you, okay, that, uh, that is the word of faith which we preach. Mm -hmm. You have to have faith. What was the word of faith that Paul preached? That Jesus came... He was God in the flesh. By his resurrection, it was proven that he was a son of God. Romans, mm -hmm. I think, 1 4 says mm -hmm. that. So it's by faith in the words that Paul preached that, that, that brings us close to God, that, that we can receive the righteousness of Christ. Mm -hmm. um, it's not by trying to look all over the place to find it. Right. You know? It, it's, it's as close as, as, as our mouth. <laughs> yeah. and, and, you know, you, you think about the Bible says that Christ came to save that which was lost. And, of course, he uses the shepherd and sheep analogy that he'd leave the 99 and go in, out and find yeah. the one. And, and Israel, Israel was chosen by God, and they still today. And, by the way, I'm so thankful for our current president and, and the fact that the United States is supporting Israel right now because that is God's chosen people will always be. Uh, yeah. But but here he's just getting into it that this is what we're proclaiming. This is what we're preaching. 
that it is in your heart and your mind. And, and there again, we'll get to that in just a minute in verse 9 because verse 9 is, is profound in the fact that, that God has made the way and it's up to us. It's like, Noel, uh, I don't have my pen with me, but if I had a pen and was handed it to you, uh, and it's still my pen until you take it. And that's what God's done through for salvation through Christ Jesus. Uh, he's offered it to mankind. Christ yeah. fulfilled the, the, the price that had to be paid on the cross. Uh, but we have to receive it with our heart and our mouth. Yeah. And we have to believe in our heart and we have to confess with our mouth. And that's what verse 9 is getting to. Yeah, and that reminds me a little bit of, of Romans chapter 5, 17. That says, For if by one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of yeah. righteousness. Amen will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Receiving God's righteousness is a gift. It is. But you have to... You have to receive it. You, you have, have to take it. You have to believe it in your yeah. heart and receive it. Yeah. And when you do that, it changes your life. It does. And, and that's where a lot of people, I think, are confused because they feel like they can say the words, they can pray the, we call it a sinner's prayer. There's, there's, there's uh, different ways of praying it, but there's some, certainly some points you have to cover uh, in inviting Christ into your life and confessing your sins and, and in asking Jesus to be the Lord of your life. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so many people think they can go through the motions, even go through the baptistry, and then they're still going to go out here and live the same life. But that's where that born-again experience, that redemption, there has to be a change and if there's not a change in my life uh, and there has been in your life or anybody else's if there hasn't been a change uh, you I've always said your want to want to will yeah. will change I don't want to do that anymore because I want to please God now I belong to him I'm a child of his that's right so receiving the receiving of God's righteousness involves the heart amen the heart and the mouth it must come from within if it doesn't, like you just said, if it doesn't change you, then all you have is a is a intellect, a knowledge. Uh, it's just in, in your uh, intellect. Mm -hmm. It has to come down to your heart. We have to um, make a conscious decision, a conscious decision to receive and recognize what Jesus did for us. And when we do that, then we're going to want to confess it. You know, and but what, where a lot of people have trouble, Noel, they don't want to. They don't want a boss. Yeah. You know, that happens here in the sector world. It happens in the ministry. It happens everywhere. But so many people, you know, they want the fire insurance policy, but they 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 don't want to to adhere to. Uh, and, and it's not a burden to live for Christ. No. Not a burden at all. No. It's a joy. Uh, but they don't want to adhere to the fact that, okay, now I've got to quit doing some of the things I used to do and, and, and live a righteous life, a better life, and start growing in Christ Jesus. They don't want to yeah. do that. Yeah. So, so receiving God's righteousness involves, it's, it's, uh, you have to conceive it in your heart and you have to confirm it by your mouth. Well, let me read verse 9 here because it, it, to me uh, it's profound. It says that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That, that probably has been quoted as much uh, in people sharing the gospel with other people because, you know, this is, this, is, this is ground zero of what one must do to come to a saving faith in Jesus Christ, to have that relationship with Jesus Christ. As you've been saying, you confess with your mouth, uh, and, and the Jesus is Lord, that is... Uh, uh, in, in early Christendom, in early Christianity, that is one of the, the main sayings, uh, you know, when two people would meet on the road, uh, if, if they, they use the symbol of the fish, of course, and we see that on cars today. Uh, some of them will cut you off if you're not careful, but anyway. <laughs> uh, but, but to say, we would meet and we'd say, Jesus is Lord. Well, then I know, and if you said it, uh, we'd know that we're brothers in Christ. Yeah, you know, um Jesus says in Matthew, Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. Mm -hmm. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Right. And that word confess, Noel, it means agreeing that something is true. Yeah. And so when he says here that if you confess with your mouth, you're agreeing that Jesus is Lord. 
you're agreeing that that is a, a true statement, that, that you believe that, that you're willing to uh, adhere to it and live by it. You know, if a person doesn't accept what Jesus did, if they try to become righteous through their own self-efforts and their own works, it's an insult to Maybe God. Pull this around a little bit. There you go. It's, it's an insult. It's an yep. insult to God. It's an insult to the coming of Jesus, God in the flesh. Yeah. And it's a, it's an insult to him as far as his resurrection. Yeah. Because if we try to do it ourselves, why did Jesus come? Yeah. Why do we need, why did Jesus die on the cross for our sins? Mm -hmm. Well, when you read the New Testament, it refers to Jesus, and, and these figures might not be exactly right, but they're real close. Some 33 times in, throughout the New Testament, Matthew through Revelation, as our Savior, it refers to him as Lord like 365 times. Yeah. So the emphasis of the New Testament is Jesus being the Lord, and it's uh, what I've used with children a lot is uh, they have hand puppets now, but back in my day growing up, they had them on strings, you know, and they could make them dance and do all kinds of things. And, and that, pu pu <coughs> excuse me, that puppeteer was in total control of that puppet. That's what God desires for Christ to be in your life and mine and all of our lives as Christians, that he's in control. Yeah. He's the Lord. It's like in the old days, they, the, the peasants had to go ask the Lord in the castle if they could plant a garden out here because the land belonged to him. Yeah. You know, um, I was thinking of the verse that in Romans, I think it's Romans 14, 7 through 9, Romans 14. It says, for none of us lives to himself, and no one dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. Amen. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. Yep. For to this end, this is the reason why Christ died, and rose and lived again, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. We have to submit ourselves to Christ as Lord and recognize that he is our boss. Amen. You know. And be willing to, to uh, succumb underneath his authority and the, the authority of God. Yes. Well, in verse 10 here, he says, For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. And, and this just shows you uh, verse 9 and 10. Paul flip-flops, if you will. In verse 9, he talks about it's with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart. In verse 10, he says, it is with your heart and you believe and are justified and with your mouth that you confess. In other words, I think Paul's making the statement here, it doesn't matter which one's first necessarily, but you have to have both. Yeah. They complete each other. You have to believe in your heart and you have to confess with your mouth. I know that there are a lot of churches today that they don't have invitations, uh, public invitations, you know. And, and I understand where they're coming from. People don't like to get in front of other people and all that. But I'm telling you, the Word of God says that we're supposed to confess with our mouth. And we ought not to be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that God has uh, touched our heart through the Holy Spirit. And we have confessed our sins and invited Him into our life and, and prayed and asked Him to do that. And we ought not to be ashamed of that. It shouldn't be something that we're so bashful about that we don't want people to, to uh, we don't want to get in front of people. It ought to come natural that, hey, I, I, I'm, I believe I'm one of you now, you know, fellow brothers and sisters. I, I live a life without God, and now I live a life with God. Yeah. That I don't want to go back. Amen. You know, no, nope. I don't want to go back. You know, um, it says in verse 11, for the scripture says, Whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. You know, God's righteousness is impartial. It does not, yep. is the, it does not distinguish between uh, Jew or Gentile, right. slave or free, rich or poor, rich or poor, right. male or female. female. You know, and, and like I said earlier, I don't think the Jews like that idea no. that, that pagan Gentiles could become righteous by faith. Yeah. You know, um, but, but, it, but it is universal. Anyone calling on the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
Now, chapter 9 talked about the sovereignty of God and salvation. Mm -hmm. How he chose, you know, Jacob over Esau. Right. He chose uh, Cain. Uh, 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 Isaac over mm -hmm. Ishmael, mm -hmm. you know. You know, God's sovereign, but man has responsibility. Yeah. And, and uh, we have to call upon the Lord and we shall be saved. Well, in verse 12 uh, and uh, 13 really reiterates that. Verse 12 says, For there is no difference between Jew uh, and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and uh, richly blesses all those who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, and that's just what you just said. That uh, you know, it doesn't matter if you're if you're Japanese, Chinese, color of your skin, what is the kids used to sing, yellow, white, black, uh, whatever it was. Uh, that that God uh, salvation is for everyone, uh, yeah. and and uh, uh, man was created in the image of God, uh, and and Jesus Christ died for everyone. That's right. You know, it reminds me a little bit of uh, old Job. He did not want to go to Nineveh because they, the Nineveh people were very, very um, like root beast. You know, they right, were, right. They were very uh, Car brother Clark would say carnal, carnal, <laughs> fleshly, yeah, immoral. Right. Uh, if you read about the Nineveh people, they were very, very uh, Bar -bar barbaric. Yes. Wasn't they? And, and, and Jonah said, I don't want them to, to get saved. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want them to repent. Yeah. You know, but they don't deserve it. That's right. That's what it you is. See? But see, none of us deserve it. Yeah. That's, that's the thing, you yeah. know. Well, we've got about four minutes left here. Let me uh, just go ahead and read verses 14 and 15. And, and uh, uh, he, he, he asked some rhetorical questions here. Of course, he just said that everyone uh, who calls on the name of the Lord, whether Jew or Gentile, uh, will be saved. And then he, he uses the word how to ask uh, four rhetorical questions. So he says in verse 14, How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear uh, without someone preaching to them? And then verse 15, And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Uh, to me, you know, we'll go ahead. No, okay. Uh, I think 14 and 15 really tell us how a person gets saved. Mm -hmm. He must admit he's a sinner. Right. He must call on the Lord to be saved. He must believe in order to call, and he must hear in order to believe. Yeah, and and, right. and it takes all of it. Yeah, it's not either or; it's all of it. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, I, I've been blessed to go to the country of Belarus uh, uh, six times now, and and the the people over there are so receptive to the gospel. And this this passage right here, uh, it goes back uh, as as far as I'm concerned to. Uh, to the book of Acts where, where uh, Jesus told the disciples, you know, uh, to go to the upper room. And, and then he says in verse 7 of Acts 1, he says, uh, It is not for you to know the times and the dates the Father has sent uh, by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses, and he says, in Jerusalem, which is in our community here, uh, in all Judea, which would be our state, in Samaria, which would be our nation, and to the ends of the earth. And that's exactly what he's, Paul is saying here, that, you know, uh, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. That, that it's, this is not either or over here when it talks about Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. That we're supposed to be sharing the gospel. We're supposed to be who we need to be uh, to that attendant uh, behind the uh, cashier's desk at the, at the local uh, dollar store or, or whomever we come into contact with. It starts yeah. here, but it goes to the ends of the earth. Some people say, think it's talking about feet. Mm -hmm. He's not talking about feet. No. He's talking no. about those who bring the message. The good news. The good they news. carry the good news. Who carry yeah. the good news of the gospel. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've got about one minute here. You have a last thought you'd like to share, Noel? Well, I guess, I guess we just have to be thankful. I'm thankful that I realize that coming to Christ by faith makes me acceptable to the Father. Amen. 
I don't have to jump through loops to be acceptable to God. Right. And even though you and I may fall short, and we do, we're still acceptable because the blood of Christ has covered our past, present, and future sins. You know what? We'll go ahead. And we are uh, we are in a process. Yeah. Of being conformed. We call we, it sanctified. Yeah, we have not made yeah. it. You know, no. but we're in a process right. of uh, becoming more and more right. Christ-like. When you know? when uh, I was reading this in one book, it says, and when it says, "How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news." The the word "beautiful" can be uh, translated "timely." How timely are the feet of those who bring good news? In other words, in God's time, He sent Christ into this world. He lived. Uh, he was born of a virgin. He lived a sinless life. He died at 33 years, plus or minus, and he arose on the third day. And he is the perpetuation for our sins. Amen. And praise be to God that God uh, has made the way for us to be made right in his eyes. Amen. Uh, well, Noel, thanks again for being here thank and, and uh, sharing. And uh, uh, Matt, thank you for coming again this week. And uh uh, we hope that you all have a, a good rest of the week. Uh, this is Friday morning we're doing this, but uh, don't forget that uh, we will have our drive-up uh, service this Sunday uh, at 8 o'clock, and so uh, come and be a part of that. We've had some good attendance, really, and if you can be a part of that, and don't forget that we have uh, uh, Matt uh, Smith is doing the, for the older children, uh, and then Miss Mimi uh, is doing the younger children, and so the, all those are out there for you. They're on our app, they're on our web page, and they are, get on YouTube real quick. So uh, uh, I think both of us want to again thank Matt Janky for coming you, and, and helping us out. I just asked him earlier when he was going to have to go back to work, and it looks like what'd you say, June? Uh, he's going to have to go back to work, so he won't be with us. And he said, I'll see you then at Christmas. <laughs> so, so, Matt, we do appreciate you very much and uh, your family. And uh, it's a, a pleasure for us, uh, for y'all to have come and, and are being a part of New Zion Baptist Church. We love all of you. Uh, may God bless you. Be safe. Uh, and uh, we look forward to when we can all get back together and, and worship the Lord as we've always done in the past. God bless each and every one of you.